Bibles, if you would, to a couple uh, portions of scriptures. We'll try to preach a little bit. And uh, first, 2 Corinthians chapter number 12. 2 Corinthians chapter number 12. And uh, we'll turn again in just a moment. Sega Corinthians, page 1238, if you have a Schofield Bible. And you found your place, say amen. amen. Verse number one, it said, It is not speaking for me to doubtless to glory. I will come in visions and revelations of the Lord. I knew a man in Christ above Fourteen years ago, whether in the body I cannot tell, whether out of the body I cannot tell, God knoweth. And such a one called up to the third heaven. And I knew such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell, God knoweth. And how he was called up under the paradise and heard unspeakable words, which is not lawful for, me to, for man to utter. Let's pray. Our Father, we love you. <clears throat> Thank you for the goodness of the Lord. Thank you, dear God, today that you saved us by your marvelous grace. And Lord, I thank you, dear God, today that we can sing and we can enjoy the good blessings of the Lord in the house of God. And Lord, you sure have been good to us. And we thank the Lord for that. And Lord, I pray that you'd help us preach, Lord, as a dying man to a dying congregation. Hide me behind the cross, I pray. And Lord, I realize I stand where no man should stand alone. And Lord, I desire thy help, Lord, like never before. And I pray, God, that you'd touch my lips, illuminate my mind, bathe me in the Holy Ghost here today, I pray. I pray that you'd be the hearts and lives of these that are here, dear God. I pray that you'd work on them, and I pray that you'd deal with them. I pray, God, in Jesus' name, save that one that may be lost. Encourage that one that's discouraged. I pray, God, that you'd uh, revive the saints again that thy people may rejoice in thee. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. Here we have a story, we have an account of Paul going up to the third heaven. And Paul said as a man over 14 years ago, whether in the body or out of the body, I, I cannot tell, God knows, but he was caught up to the third heaven. Now the third heaven is... Not where the, where the airplanes are. The third heaven is not where the astronauts go. The, the third heaven is where God resides. And Paul says it. Paul said, I was there. I was in the third heaven and I saw things that are not lawful for man to utter. <coughs> and I'd like to preach about a perfect place to be. Brother Frankie, Paul said, I went to heaven and I saw some things and I viewed some things, Brother David, that man don't even have any idea, Brother Jimmy, how to even describe what I saw. And I'm telling you, while the lost person that's rejected Christ is begging for one drop of water in the pits of hell, you and I this morning that are saved by God's amazing grace will be in a place that's perfect for a child of God. And hell is the place where men and women, boys and girls that reject Christ after a life of rejection go to hell without Christ. But you and I that are saved, Brother Ronald, we get to go to heaven. For the saved person, for the person uh, that, that knows the Lord. God has prepared us a place, has, is preparing us a place to go to a place called heaven. John chapter 14, turn quickly now. You, you listen fast, I'll preach faster and we'll get out of here. Verse number one, he said, let not your heart be troubled. Let not your heart be troubled. Jesus is talking to his disciples. And they saw things that you and I have never saw. Brother Josh, they saw the water turned to wine. They saw the multitudes fed with just a few fishes. They saw the, the Jesus walking on the water. They saw heal the blind and touch the lame. They saw things like, how can you be discouraged when you're around Christ and see things like that? But Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. 
But I saw things, but let not your heart be troubled. He knew that there was going to face some things, Brother Dean, after his ascension to heaven, after he got out of this, out of the, bar, out of the grave, and after he uh, spoke to them, and after he was taken out in the taxi cloud, hey, he knew that their hearts would be troubled about a lot of things. And Brother Larry, we can, we can relate to that. Brother David, we can relate, to, Brother Michael, relate to the idea having our hearts troubled in this life. In this life we have heartaches. In this life we have sorrow. In this life we have problems. And Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God? That's what he said. You believe in God? Well, yes. Yes. He said, believe in me also. He said, you believe in God? Believe also in me. In my Father's house? Not, 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 a, not an apartment, not rooms, not a condo. In my father's house are many mansions. Whew. He said, if it were not so, I told you. Jesus said, Brother, Brother Keith, he said, if we didn't have a mansion in heaven, I'd have told you that. But you got one. Yeah, man. I don't know how far I'll get, but I'm getting there. He said, there's a mansion in heaven. Hey, there's a place, there's a place, there's a mansion with your name on it if you're saved. And he says, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. Now, can you imagine how big his house is? If he's got mansions inside of his house, that's a big house. If it were not so, I told you. I, he said, I go to prepare a place for you. If I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again. Thank God. Yeah, man. Receive you unto myself that where I am, Ye shall be also. Amen. Amen. He said, Whether I go, you know, and the way you know. And Thomas saith unto him, Lord, how, how we know not whether thou goest, how can we know the way? Jesus said, Here's the key. Here's the answer. Here's the key to your mansion. Here's the key to heaven. Here's the key of getting there. He said, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. Thank God. So for the saved people, God is preparing a place. Jesus is preparing a place for you and I. Thank God. Amen. Hey, Hebrews chapter number 11, don't turn. He said, by faith, Abraham. When he, he's called out to go to a place, he should be received after an inheritance. You get an inheritance after you pass away. You don't get an inheritance first. You get an inheritance after somebody passes away. He says, he said, uh, for an inheritance obeyed, and he went not, he said he went out not knowing whether he went. And by faith, he sojourned in a land of promise as a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles, he said, with Isaac and Jacob and the heirs of the same promise. Thank God. He's preparing a place. Heaven is, heaven is, 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 is a, a thought that's almost unthinkable. Miss Tammy and I, and I thought about this all the time we were gone, about heaven and about how good heaven's going to be. And we saw some beautiful sights and saw some sights. I'm telling you, it was almost breathtaking sights. And brother, we saw sights that I'll probably never see again. But I'm telling you, that's nothing to compare to heaven. That's nothing to compare what God has prepared for us. That's nothing in comparison to what God has for his children. Thank God. 
Amen. Heaven is a thought without thinking. Hey, listen, we are, we are a blood-washed child of God. We are a blood-washed child of God waiting graduation day. Amen. Hey, there's a day coming out there very soon, very soon. Things are lining up. Things are lining up left and right. Things are happening left and right. Things are taking place left and right. Lining up to the Bible, Brother Kevin. Lining up to the things that God said is going to happen. And the next thing's going to happen is you're going to hear a trumpet of God. And the trumpet of God shall sound. And the dead in Christ shall rise. And you and I that are alive and remain shall be caught up together with him in the clouds in the air. Amen. So there's a trumpet going to sound and you and I are going to leave this world and there's a place, a perfect place that we're going to go to. Amen. Thank God. God hadn't left us alone. Brother Dean, I got the Holy Ghost living inside of me. He's bubbling around in my heart already. And I thank God for the Holy Ghost of God that's able to speak to our hearts about this place called heaven. Amen. He hadn't left us alone. He's given us, he's, he hadn't left us alone to grope around the darkness of this world. This world gets you down, won't it? Amen. This world gets you down if you let it. Amen. We were, we were trying, and I'm not trying to, I'm trying to get to the message, Brother Ron, but we was in Houston, and uh, we were, had a four-hour de- <clears throat> four delay, and there's 10 other people that had come there the day before. That was on a Monday. They came in on a Sunday. It was going to fly out on a Sunday. And they, they sent them to the wrong gate to go to Hawaii. And, they, and, they, and they, so they had to run to the other gate. And while they got to the other gate, they, the other flight took off. And the other flight took off and left. And they had to spend the night in, in Houston. They were going to go to Hawaii from Monday to Friday. They're coming back on Friday. And they were supposed to leave on Sunday, so it's going to have those days. And they had to spend the night on, on over there at Houston. They come back on, the, on uh, Friday, I mean, on Monday with us and 10 of them. And uh, we was talking to them a little bit. And, and they said, we had to spend the night, and, and we're going to go now, and we're going to have to come back Friday. And we got on the plane, Brother Tim, and, and we got up there, and we got on the plane, sat down, and uh, they herded us in like a bunch of cattle, set us down in our seats. Buckle up, boys, because here it comes. And all of a sudden, the pilot gets he said, you got to get off. And I don't mind waiting, but don't put me on the plane take me back off. Right? So Brother Ron, we got on a plane. They said, you got to get off. Something's wrong with the engine. I said, where's the door? <clears throat> Amen. That ain't real confidence for a man to say, something's wrong with the engine, is it? So we get off, and this, this here's 10 people, and we waited four more hours, and they said, we don't know when it's going to take place. Here these people are. Spent all that money to go over there, and now they've delayed, and they've not delayed again. And that woman said, I said, ma'am, I, I, I was going to say something to one of, the, one of the fellas, Brother Kevin, but I was afraid I'd get cussed out. So I just let that ride. And there's one of the women sitting in front of us, and she said, I'm going to do it. I don't care. She said, they can do what they want to do. I don't care. Just tell them what I'm going to do. I said, whoo And I said, ma'am, I'm so sorry. And I really meant that I'm so sorry. She said, we're going home. I said, you are? She said, yeah. She said, I'm spending, two, I'm spending two days in the air. And she said, I, we'll wind up spending two days in Hawaii and two days in the air. I said, makes sense to me. I'd go home too. So, so they went home. We got on the plane four hours later, sat beside a guy. And, I, he, and he said, uh, we got to talk, a little small talk. And uh, he said, what, what do you do? He, I said, I'm a heart doctor. <clears throat> and I explained to him what a heart doctor was. And uh, Brother Dean, I said, what do you do? He said, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm Homeland Security. I said, oh, Lord, here I am, Homeland Security. And me and him stalked a little bit, and he said, I got delayed. And he said, I'm going from, he said, I got seven minutes. Now listen to this. I got seven minutes to go from gate to gate to, go, to catch another airplane in Hawaii to go to Guam. I said, and then we got the four hours. He said, that ain't going to happen, is it? I said, no. So he said, it'll probably be Thursday before I can get another flight out. So anyway, make a long story short, we get over there and saw sights that we have never even thought about seeing. But there's nothing compared to this. Nothing compared to the place called heaven. 
and that trumpet's going to sound, Brother Frankie, you and I are going to leave out of here, and God hadn't left us alone to walk in the darkness. That's what I was trying to get to. God hadn't left us alone to walk in the darkness. We have a place to go to. I've got a direction. I know where I'm going. Amen. I know where I'm going, whether, whether going through the grave or through the, through the clouds. I'm going to heaven either way. Hey, I'm a winner either way. I'm a winner. Amen. So that's heaven's our goal. Heaven's our prize. Heaven's our reward. And as soon as that trumpet sound, we'll get to see the pearly white city. Thank God. Amen and amen. Hey, preacher, what are you saying? I'm saying today my soul is excited. I'm more persuaded than ever before that God is preparing us a place. The Lord Jesus Christ has compared us a place. And just as hell is prepared for the lost, heaven is prepared for the saved. Thank God. Give you a few things about heaven. I'm going home. Watch this. Look at the facts of heaven. In chapter number 14, verse number 2, he said, I go to prepare you. I go to a place. I'm going to prepare you a place. He said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house. That's a place. That's a fact. Amen. He didn't say, he didn't say it was like an unto. It wasn't a parable. He wasn't speaking in parables. He was making a statement to his disciples. He said, in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I'd have told you. He said, in my father's house, that's a place. My mother and dad have a place in South Carolina. That's their house. That's my father's house. That's a place. That's factual. Miss Tammy, I have a house to go to. You have a house. That's a place. That's factual. And God said, I'm preparing you a place in heaven. Thank God. Amen. A place is prepared. And I'm so glad and thankful for that, aren't you? Amen. Human society will tell you that you create your own heaven here on earth. Well, if that's the case, we're all living in hell. The way some people live. Right? You don't create your own heaven down here. You can be happy. Yet as a child of God, you can have joy. Amen. You can have contentment, but you can't create your own heaven. Don't you let anybody tell you that. Heaven's not a place that you create. Heaven's a place that God has prepared. Amen. Yeah, man. Hey, heaven is real. Heaven is as real as the pew you're sitting in. Heaven is as real as the earth you're walking on. Heaven is as real as the car you get in and drive. Heaven is real as the skin on your bones. Heaven's real. It's real. It's real. Amen. Thank God. Amen. Hey, sin originated in heaven. Sin originated in heaven, and God said, I'm going to make a new heaven. Amen. You can't outdo God. You can't outdo what God's going to do. Sin originated. Hey, uh, the devil tried to rise up and overtake God, and God threw him out and a third of his angels out, and he said, I'm going to create a new heaven and a new earth. Thank God. And we're going to get to go to see the new heaven. Amen. That's facts. It's a perfect place. It's a perfect place because it's built by a perfect architect. Amen. This builder and maker, Paul said in Hebrews, it's builder and maker is God. Thank the Lord. We have, a, we have an imperfect society. We live in sin and shame all around us. But heaven is a perfect place, a place with perfect people. We don't live in a perfect place right now. You don't have a perfect pastor. I don't pastor perfect people. Amen. Several people ask me, you know, our, we got our name on there, and several people said, what kind of doctor are you? What kind of doctor are you? And I kept telling them, I kept telling them, Baptist preacher, Baptist preacher, or somebody tell them I'm a cardiologist, somebody tell heart doctor. And Brother, Brother Robert, I told Miss Sammy on the plane, I said, next person asked me that, I said, I'm going to tell them I'm a pediatric doctor. She said, what? I said, I'm telling them I'm a pediatric All I did was the children. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Hey, listen, we're living in an imperfect society. You're an imperfect person. I'm an imperfect preacher. Amen. Amen. Hey, listen, we're living in that kind of society, but Brother Jerry, we're going to a perfect place. Thank God. No more sin, no more shame. Hey, no more sorrow, no more problems. We're going to a perfect place. It's a factual place, and it's a perfect place. Thank God. Amen. My heart is excited. My heart rejoices. Hey, hey, my heart rejoices because in this world we may not have, we may not be at home, but heaven awaits us. 
I'm, we're strangers and pilgrims in this land. Thank God. When you win the victory, when you win the victory, when you got saved, you won the victory over this so sin world, sinful world. Amen. And re, our reward is an everlasting home. I thank the Lord. We're not going up there for a few days, a few weeks, a few months, a few years. We're going up there for, for, forever. Thank the Lord. Give you just a few more. I got to hurry. Number two, what? Not, on, not only is the facts, but number two, there's some fellowship in heaven. Now, in this life, and I, I, in this life, we have separation. We have separation with all those we've hold, held dear because the grave seems so final to us. People just run off and leave us behind. And they're not sorrowing today. They're, they're happy and if they're saved, they're in heaven today. We're the ones that are left with heartbroken and, and sorrow. We have walked away from a new grave, Brother Dean, and went home to an empty house. And we've seen sickness take over our loved ones and death take them away from us. And Brother Larry, Brother Doug, our, the circle of family, our family circle has been broken. And our lives are missing those who we have loved so dear. We are missing those. We never stop missing those. Amen. But that's, way, that's what life gives us. This world is a life of separation. All those that we love seem to walk away and leave us behind. But in that place, in that city, that golden strand, I can see it in the, with my faith of my eye, eye of faith, in that golden city, that golden strand, we will be reunited with our loved ones forever, Brother Pearson, forever. Amen. David said this way. David said that I cannot bring them back to me. I can't bring them back to me. Brother Ronald, I can. I wish I could sometimes, but I can. I can't bring them back. That's what David said. David said, but I can go with them. David said, I, 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 I can go where they're at. I know where they're at. I know that they're in heaven. I know that they're in, the, in fellowship with God. I know that. I, I, I can't, brother, brother Warren, I can't bring them back here, but I can go where they're at. Thank God. And I've got a longing to go there. I've got a longing to go where they're at. And this place is perfect. It's a fellowship. Our fellowship is a perfect place, in that perfect place. Because it's a perfect place to be. I, even our fellowship down here is, is temporary. And, and our fellowship down here is temporary. But our fellowship up there is eternal. Thank the Lord. Now, we that are born again, we that are saved, Jesus Christ becomes a part of us. The Bible refers to us as bone of his bone, flesh of his flesh. Brother Danny, we are the bride. He is the bridegroom. And he speaks to the idea that we're part of him. Brother Ronald, he's a part of us. And we, we get to go to heaven and be a part of of his fellowship again. I can feel him in my heart this morning. I can feel him in my soul, but something is missing. But Keith, it's that broken fellowship of this life. This life brings the broken. But when we get to heaven, when we walk through the gate, when we step on that golden strand, when we see the Lord, He'll bring our loved ones with him, and we'll all fellowship again together. Thank God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You've got loved ones, and I got loved ones that are gone by the way of the grave. But one day, one day, one day, we'll all be together again. Thank God. Woo! Thank the Lord. What a day that'll be when I see his face. He loved us. When we were unlovable. He loved us when we didn't love him. Amen. 
He came to where we was at. And all of our sin and shame picked us up out of that horrible pit. Set us on the solid rock. Established our goings. Put a song in our heart. And one day, one day, we'll have fellowship with God like we never had before. One day, when that trumpet sounds and that eastern sky splits, we'll get to go to be with the Lord and forever we shall be with the Lord. Woo! Thank God. Forever we shall be with the Lord. Thank God, thank God. Think about that mama. Think about that daddy. Think about that husband. Think about that wife. Think about that son. Think about that daughter. It's already run on the race. The race is over for them. And they're in heaven. And I don't know if this is so. Brother Kevin, sometimes I like to think about it. Are they waiting and looking through the gate? I don't know if we're headed that way or not. I wonder if they ever think about us as they look through the gate and maybe it's today. Maybe it's today. I'll get to show them around. I'll get to show them my mansion. And this may be, just maybe, Brother Ronald, I, I, I don't know if this is so, but maybe that loved one that we'd outrun us, maybe get to take us to our mansion. Shoo. And say, this is yours for all eternity. What a fellowship. Amen. It may be broken down here. It'll never be broken again up there. May have separation down here. It'll never be separated up there. It's only goodbye down here, but it's good morning up there. Amen. Amen. Hey, the Bible says that we see through a dark a glass darkly. But then, Brother Doug, I can't see it all. I can't see it all. I can sing about it. Brother Michael, I can testify about it. I can preach about it. I can talk about it. But Brother David, I ain't seen it all. Paul said, through a dark glass, through a glass darkly. But one day, we'll see him face to face. Whew. One day, He'll take us by the hand. One day I'll look upon his face. One day I'll see his feet that are with nail prints in his hands. One day, one day, my fellowship with him will not be broken. Amen and amen. You think about that forever. Forever, forever, we'll get to be with the Lord. Forever, forever, we'll get to be in heaven. Thank God, thank God. Forever, forever. We'll get to be in heaven, thank God. Amen. Miss Norma, if you would, just come on and get a song together. But forever and forever and forever and forever. Woo! Get to be with the Lord. Amen, amen. I don't see, I don't see very well now. But my eye of faith, my fellowship, by faith, by faith, Abraham, by faith. All these Old Testament things. And by faith, you and I are walking this same path. Yeah. Amen. You think about this, Brother David. Everybody, don't forget this, everybody from Adam until now that's been saved by God's amazing grace are walking the same path that we have. Amen. Amen. Brother Doug, they've done the same things that you and I have done. And by faith, just, you and, just like you and I got faith, we walk in the same path to that, to that perfect place. Perfect place. i got a couple more, but let me just skip over. Let me give you this last one. Miss Norma, let's stand to our feet, heads bow, eyes closed. 
The last point of it, I had another one about the, fin about the final destination of heaven, how we're going to be there. But Brother Doug, the last one is this. The folly of missing heaven. I'd be amiss to tell you today in a crowd this size that everybody is going to that place. I'd be afraid to say that. But I can say this. Everybody can go to that place. Jesus said, I'm the way. I'm the way. I'm the way. I'm the way. Truth and the life. Heaven's going to be wonderful. It's going to be beyond human comprehension. But not everybody's going to be there. You say, would a loving and caring God send a person to hell? No, He wouldn't, but you'd send yourself there. He doesn't want you to go to hell. And how foolish it'd be for you to sit in the church house today. Sit in this church hoping, hoping to go to heaven, but not knowing. Missing heaven by 18 inches from your mind to your heart. You missed heaven. I wonder what anybody this morning said, preacher. God spoke to my heart, young and old alike. Preacher, God spoke to my heart. Would you pray for me? I'm not sure I'm saved today. Would you just slip up your hand all over the church house this morning. Just put it up and put it right back down. Preacher, I'm not sure I'm saved. How about it this morning? Can you honestly say, can you truthfully say in your heart that you're going to heaven? That you're going to heaven.